Welcome back to Wrestling Empire, a booking career on the Nintendo Switch. It's a new week. I have a new boss, and I don't think I'm going to hit that 10.5k here in the Southeast USA, but that's okay because we no longer have that deadline from Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman's gone. That means attack slug back in the building. Now, I do know, first and foremost, we do want to attempt to hire the Rated R Superstar Edge, who is now a free agent here in wrestling school, and he has an overall popularity of 76. So yes, give me the Edgester in this. I want that five-second pose, shall we? Let's bring you in to Strong Style Wrestling. Give me a 20-week deal with Edge, give him uh, 1500 a week, and give him a push toward a title. Yes, yes, and yes. What do you say, Edge? That sounds like a good idea to me, right? Right? Main guy. Happy to sign. We have the Edgester. Fan-freaking-tastic. Now, that means that I know, ideally, 35 is the number, right? If you get up to, like, 38, that's a problem. So I don't want to hire anybody else right now. But, of course, there are certain names that could afford to be let go, like, say, a bald order here. Uh, but he has 33 weeks on his deal still. That could be a problem. I can't afford that at the moment. But we do have pay-per-view to book today. Now, that means that all these multi-man shenanigans build towards pay-per-view and a lot of one-on-one -on -one encounters, for those wondering here in Strong Style Wrestling. So I don't expect a five-star card because, again, getting five stars in a one-on-one -on -one match is a lot harder than doing those multi-man elim matches. And there are 10 matches to book. So like last time, I'm going to start with six, and then we'll see where it goes from there. And we open the show with a barbed wire street fight. Coming to the ring first, we have John Moxley, the unscripted violence of Mr. Moxley here, is ready to go in our opening, but not really opening contest, because obviously there were four matches on the undercard there. We'll get to those. Hopefully, maybe, we'll see. But it's a street fight, it's a shoot fight, so no rules, and the opponent will be the wrestling God JBL. So let's get this one underway after they have something to say. When you are dealing with a rabbit animal, rope can't contain it as well as barbed wire. All you deserve to feel is the pain of torn flesh as I beat you from one side of this ring to the other, from pillar to post. You're the only animal in this ring, John Moxley, and I'll put you down. So good. We shall see about that, JBL. We shall see about that in this barbed wire, shoot fight, street fight, deathmatch style endeavor in our opening contest. Let's get it on. Mox has adrenaline. These fans don't care about this match whatsoever. Not even a finisher can give him a star. Not even a finisher can give him a star. Like, it's ridiculous here with JBL. They don't care at all. And John Moxley wins that in a two and a quarter star stinker. Like I told you, one on one is real hard to actually make happen in a regular set of rules, even in a hardcore match. It's just like five stars, you need to have like four guys in the ring. JBL goes down in a mundane barbed wire street fight. And Moxley was going up. Meanwhile, Daniel Bryan wants to team with Mark Merrow. I mean, I guess, I suppose, sure. I don't have anything against that, sure, why not? So it could be the start of something big. I mean, we do need more tag teams considering we currently have some injured tag team champions in that whole Bob Backlund thing. So, you know, there was that. Anyhow, moving on. Next up, a triple threat contest. It is the two former Strong Style Champions, and one man who hopes to one day be a champion, Minoru Suzuki. We have Mickey James and Lita on commentary, and in the ring you see Mark Merrow with his manager and his tag team partner, so stacking that deck for Mark Merrow, and then it is Drew McIntyre. Mark Merrow, I'm surprised you're even here. I beat you time and time and time again. Oh, and Suzuki is the X-Factor in this matchup. So, this is a one fall to the finish, not Elim. So, watch it be a two-star endeavor 
because that's how things work here in this game without having that elim stipulation. I've learned that having played it now for a couple of weeks. What are you gonna do? But maybe, just maybe, we'll have enough excitement here to hit at least a four star, if not higher, but I have my doubts. McIntyre, just about there, at finish, has adrenaline, gets marrow, doesn't get marrow, gets tossed, oh, there it is, code breaker, into, oh, that's it, marrow taps, marrow taps. You weren't any help at all, Daniel Bryan. You're my tag team partner. What happened? Is this like you wanted me to lose? We were a pair. It's our first night out, and you screwed me, Bryan. You didn't help me at all, and Suzuki picks the bones of the wild man in that match finish as Bryan tries to help, and Drew's like, you know what? I won. I'll see you guys later. I'm out of here. Solid knee plus to Suzuki. Drew is now a heel for reasons. Okay. Mero also a heel. And Bailey is mad about it. Next up, the lightweight championship, the women's championship, it is a last woman standing match. The challenger, Mickey James, taking on the champion, Paige. In this matchup, we have a Needles and Aubrey on commentary. Special guest referee is Luke Harper. Because Luke Harper is cheaper to hire for referee duty than Aubrey Edwards is for reasons, man. Look. I'm trying to save some money. I'm gonna definitely probably, I'm probably gonna lose money on this show. So that's just kind of how it is with all these matches having to get booked, all this talent having to get booked. You're gonna lose money, and not having the constant five star ratings is not gonna fill this building to make that money back. Just saying. But it is what it is, and it's Monday, so we do what we do here on the show. Paige, you've been ducking me. You've been hiding from me. You've been squirreling it away from me, and I want what is mine. I am the biggest threat in this division, and you are going a down. And here we go. Last woman standing. What is a standing 10 count on that? There is definitely heat here. It is number one contender facing the champion, and we'll see how I can get this hopefully to at least three, if not higher. I'm hoping, but again, I don't know. Mickey James going upstairs. The high. Rent District Stomp! Is that stomp enough to keep her down for a standing 10 count? Heading back into the ring, and we're gonna find out. So hopefully Paige is not seriously injured, but we'll see, man. We shall see if Hardcore Contra can take down the Rampage. No, Paige on her feet. Shockingly, surprisingly, stunningly on her feet and fights back but perhaps Mickey is just too much at this juncture of the matchup. Heading towards finish here. Wants it. Needs it. Needs to hit two. And maybe, just maybe, Paige will stay down. So far, the champion's fighting spirit is just ridiculous. So, gonna go for that finish now. And try for it. Adrenaline, we're here. Paige, say hello to Mickey James. And I'll do it again. There it is. Is what? She should be done. That should be it. That should be it. It should be over. At a three and a half star matchup. Luke Harper counting and counting and counting. Can Paige get to her feet at a seven count? At just barely solid knee plus from Mickey James. Stay down, Paige. Just stay down. She's stirring. She might not make it. And we have a new lightweight champion, Mickey James. Four and a quarter. I will take that any dang day of the week. Mickey James dethrones Paige as the lightweight champion of strong style wrestling. Here's hoping Paige is not seriously injured from that matchup. And Paige is out with a facial injury for one week. Congrats to Mickey James, the new lightweight champion. Bald Order wants Devon as his manager. He wants the knowledge, the acumen, the legendary. Sure. Do that. I don't. Whatever, man. Look, 
If that's going to help you out from not being a jobber, sure. If that's going to help you be a tag team and put people through, through tables, sure. Next up, it is Brother versus Brother. Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy. Two out of three falls, furniture smash, tables litter. The outside of the ring guest referee is Lita. So the stakes could not be higher here in this matchup. We finally get Matt versus Jeff. Tag team dissolves and gonna fight each other here. Oh, wonderful, yes. Jeff Hardy, I'm tired. We've been mentioning the same breath as you. It's time to change the conversation. Everyone talks like I'm your inferior. We both know I've been your superior. My light is too bright to stay in your shadow. Don't worry about shadows. I'm going to put your lights out, brother of mine. Here we go. So two out of three on the furniture smash, and the match will take place. And this will be interesting, if nothing else. I'm not going to say it's going to be a, a highly rated matchup, but certainly there are some considerations here between these springboard into nothing individuals. So plenty of tables lit to the outside here. I think 30 of them, if I did it properly. Maybe not, but we'll see. Uh, there are countouts, though, so got to be careful here on how you approach the match. But it is a furniture smash here, so... Uh, first one to go through two tables is going to be uh, the loser. Jeff Hardy lining it up and can't quite. Oh, to the outside, almost through that table. Almost. The springboard and Matt Hardy scores due to the hubris of Jeff Hardy. So, Jeff Hardy is an idiot. What else is new? Putting his own body on the line and doing it the dumb way. And Matt tricked him and put him through a table. But he's being counted here. And he wants that table in the ring, brother versus brother. Can Jeff get the second one in this matchup? We shall see. Matt Hardy slides out. Jeff Hardy gonna... Oh, no! And there it is. Matt Hardy, the superior brother. Middle fingers in the air. Jeff Hardy just goes through two tables straight in a row. Three and a quarter stars. A pleasing tables furniture smash matchup. But the overall show right now is at a star and a half. So it's not going great. Next up, the TV championship is on the line. Former champion Dean Malenko felt he got screwed the last time in that gauntlet match and got pinned by Cody Rhodes. But look who is special guest referee in this matchup. So the deck is stacked Against Dean, we have Kane as referee here, the tag team partner of Cody Rhodes, former tag team champion. I've been where you are now, Cody Rhodes. I was the TV champion, and I'm mad that I lost it to you. But I have the burning desire to claim it back. My name is Kane. If I have to climb over you to get back to the top of the mountain, that's just what I'm going to do. Anybody worthy of this title would have never let it go. You were a loser then, Dean Malenko, and you're a loser now. And here we go. Dean already damaged going into the matchup, and this one should be fire, but again, uh, it's one-on-one, -on -one, and I have my doubts in even hitting a four-star rating with these two. I'd like to. I would. But Cody pulling those heel tactics and taking a breather, and Kane not counting his count out there, which he should. This is a regular matchup. Strict rules here with the T the title on the line. So Kane, do your job properly here. Cody has it in deep all the way. We're heading towards a three and a quarter here. Can Dean get to the ropes in time? Can I? Nope. He could not get to the ropes in time. I was mashing as hard as I could, but Cody Rhodes retains the TV title against Dean Malenko and adds insult to injury. Thanks to Kane. Cementing his reign as TV champion. So far, it has been a two and a quarter star show here with 5,000 people in the building. The main event will be Sid and Randy Orton. World Championship. The challenger will be Psycho Sid. Sid Justice. Sid Udy. Sid is here. And he has something to say 
to these fans out there in the arena. This is a straight up one on one match. Here comes the champion Randall Keith Orton, the reigning, defending, undisputed, strong style champion with his fancy eye patch and ready to go here. Aubrey Edwards is your official because I'm I'm currently injured, so you know, there's that. If you screaming kids can stay quiet for one second, I have something to say. I used to pander to you morons, but I'm not interested in winning a popularity contest anymore. I am the master and the ruler of the world. The Marxist Arena or the Puppets Backstage, I don't care who likes me or who doesn't. It's just going to be Jackknife, Powerbomb, one, two, three. So Randy, here we go. A one-on-one -on -one affair with the number one contender and the champion here in strong style. The richest prize in the game as such. But can Sid get it done versus Randy? Can one jackknife or two jackknives take down the Viper, the apex predator, the legend killer, as they say? As he's currently got me in a headlock. So, you know, another headlock, Randy. We're used to that, Randy, as we creep into the two and a quarter star territory. Rope break, thankfully, for your boy. But another rope break against your boy. These things happen. These things happen. Can Sid get it done? Will Randy hit that RKO out of nowhere? That is quite the interesting uh, clash of styles here between these two individuals. The choke called the rope break. We're in that two and a half star trying to get to three territory. Sid taking over. And Sid, the absolute powerhouse here in strong style. And I had to, he had to have that heel turn because, because you got to have a face and a heel. And Randy Orton is our face champion, despite the eye patch. The roll up, but Aubrey is way out of position and could not capitalize on that excellent roll up there from Randy to Sid. But Sid wants to, make, wants to get his way into Jackknife territory, but Randy waited too long. Hit that Larry in the corner. You can't discount the speed of Sid. Sid is ready to finish Randy Orton. He is ready to hit that jackknife powerbomb on Randy. Picks him up and does it again. Is that enough to take out? Oh no! Jack into the outside. He can't win the match out there. Alright, he can, well, he can win the match, but he can't win the title. And Randy is now extra salty about that. Get back in the ring, Randy. Let me pin you, Randy, as the master and the ruler of the world. Randy, house of fire on Psycho Sid. Randy gets him up to do what? To do where? To do something. You don't have a move there, Randy. You don't have a, a thing to hit. Just going to sit there and not do a move? Like, bruh, I'll play as you. And there it is, the one-winged angel from Randy Orton for reasons. And only a two-count. And only a two-count on that one-winged angel. That's funny. That's funny. Just beating the bejesus out of Sid here, trying to, trying to get back to three stars. It's, it's rough, man. Oh, no, Sid went for... Ah, that's funny. That's funny. No, Sid is your new world champion. Two and a half stars. That was terrible. That was garbage. Fans are pissed. Crowd's pissed. I'm pissed. Sid's the champ. Randy Orton's status goes down. His agility goes up in a tiresome world championship matchup. So that sucks. Zeus is still injured for another two weeks. That's not good, Zeus. That's not good, man. But look, I'm not going to have money from this show. I'm going to lose money doing this show. So no, two weeks Keep sitting on the shelf. Let it heal naturally. Whatever. So right now, this is a two and three quarter star show. Right? Let's book some undercard nonsense that we're going to just simulate. So we're going to have Needles versus Haku in a first blood match. One half of your tag team champions, Needles, with the very still injured Bob Backlund. Here we go. Simulate. And Haku wins that first blood three and a quarter stars. Next up, a tag team contest. It is Molly Holly and Kylie Barrier versus Miss Elizabeth and Bailey. And we know that Molly and Liz have some heat. 
three and a quarter stars of Molly Holly and Kelly Barrier win that tag team endeavor. Bob Backlund has another four weeks of shoulder injury. Look, Bob, so I'm not paying damn near three grand for your shoulder. And we're still three and a quarter. I don't think we're going to get past that, but I am going to book uh, for everybody else. Six man in Battle Royale here. Just like the old SVR game. So you can only do six guys in a Battle Royale. So there is that. Let's get down to business. Get in the ring so I can ring the bell. Ding, 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 gloom. The bell has rung in this battle royal. Who is going to win? It will be Tiger Mask in a two and a quarter star battle royal. What are you gonna do? What are you going to do? So a lackluster in two minutes and four seconds in this bit of a business, spending more money to get no extra star ratings here or fans on this pay per view. Again, tomorrow, back into the four man Elin matches. That's what actually matters here in this game. And Zeus, no. And that concludes our very lackluster pay-per-view three and a quarter stars. Let's just submit that bad boy and have our ratings go down this week. We'll see how it goes here. Can I maintain at least? Uh, yeah, we're down. We're still number three. We're still number three. So look, we made a seventy-eight nine thousand dollars. We spent. Oh hey. We actually, actually didn't lose that much. So we made about four or five grand there. So look, that's cool. We're good. I'm glad. I'm happy about that. Uh, next week, a week off there. Especial defeats Wack Axe to be the new world champ of Wrestling Rev. Kenny Omega is back from his uh, part-time gig. Attack Slug is also back from being injured by The Warrior. Minoru Suzuki's deal ends next week. Hmm... Sid and Razor Ramon are friends, okay? Edge isn't here yet. Relax, Edge. Uh, Maple Leaf grappling fans in Turkey like near falls and don't like faces. A cult following in the UK for Weekend Warriors. Coach Emerson defeats Scally as the new champion. And Giant Baba wants some changes. Uh, this could be the end of the game here for me here. Like, what's the... I escaped Paul Heyman, but Baba... Uh, wants the average popularity to go up. It's right now at 74. And he wants 75% and or I am fired. And this is what ended my game the last time. And we have how many weeks to do that? We have a month to do that. So we have generally the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday shows on this channel to do that. And if it's game over, I think I'm... I'm, I'm I think I'm kind of done, because y'all are just watching this show less and less, so time to move on, I suppose. But hey, if I can get there, I'll get there. I'm not going to stop trying uh, on that front, but it's not looking great with that. I'm a tax slug. Thanks for watching more videos right here. See you next time, and I'm out.